So if you spend any time in the outdoors, odds are that you already own a hiking pole that you bring with you when you're coming out on the trails. With today's technology, there are various ways that we can stabilize video footage, either in-body stabilization, using the lens stabilization, or even post-processing the video with software. In this video, I'm going to show you one method that I use to stabilize my camera when I'm taking video footage in the outdoors. And then later on in the video, I'll show you the cool parallax effect, which happens when you're panning around a subject. Okay, so here's how I use my hiking pole as a support when I do a panning shot. Imagine I want to shoot a scene in that direction and I want to move the camera in this plane left to right, right to left. So the objective is to be able to have a flat support where I can place the camera and slide it from one side to the other. Well, that works fine because this is a straight edge and it should provide a smooth surface to glide the camera on. The piece that I bring along is a piece of clothing, whether it's a beanie or a t-shirt or a rag, place that on top of the hiking pole. And what this does is it helps absorb some of the vibration that's introduced between the camera, which is a, obviously a solid uh, uh, body and the hard surface of the, the hiking pole. So I end up with a situation like this where I simply slide from one side to the other. And I'm using my hands obviously to support and keep the camera secure on that surface. But I'm really not introducing any vibration because I've got this piece of shock absorber between the camera and the hiking pole. Last night was a beautiful sunset at the cabin. So I went out to experiment with some panning shots. Here are some of the results. So I see some reflection off of this uh, fence wire. So while I still have a little bit of sunlight, let me uh, try this. So here's what you need to bring. Hiking pole, beanie, which you should have with you in any case when you're going out hiking and your favorite camera. The hiking pole acts as a rail or a support. The beanie is to stop any vibration and the camera will simply go on top of the slide like that. And you can slide it just like that. You don't have to go very far. Uh, let me show you some of the results of what I was able to obtain doing this. So check out this scene where I'm shooting directly into the setting sun. And so you always have to watch out for wildlife when you're doing this, but I can use part of this tree stump as one part of my rail and have it elevated at an angle sloping down. And then the effect that I obtain when I'm sliding towards the road is both panning left to right or right to left, as well as dropping my angle of uh, view, which gives me just an added dimension of uh, movement inside of my shot. Okay, so here's just a static scene, so you can see what it looks like without the panning motion. And then here's one with the panning motion. You decide which one looks better. And so take a look at the angle. Don't be afraid objects move in front of the sun or directly in front of the lens, especially if they're close up, because that'll just create a very interesting artifact with the light being uh, fragmented. And here we go, same thing, headed back to the cabin. Here's a still shot of the cabin, which is just a scene with a mountain in the background. Of course, I have some leaves in the foreground. And here's a shot that's slightly uh, panning to the one side. You decide which one you like better or which one works best in this case. So of course, this technique works well when we're photographing nature scenes, but we can also apply this to aviation. So here's a close up of panning across the wing and then also away from the wing. Uh, here I am panning across the scene with some trees in the foreground that helps me add some motion. So with this hangar scene, there's not much going on in the foreground. So panning across helps me create a little bit of motion. And here I am panning across this acro sport. So of course I want to draw attention to the fuselage and panning to the left. I can also use the same technique to get closer to a subject. And of course that helps us to guide the viewer towards the focal area. Uh, here I'm panning across the scene, the airplane is moving. This scene is pretty non-interesting. So by lowering the angle of view and also moving the camera from one side to the other, I'm essentially creating motion in the scene where there is very little motion. So in this panning shot, of course, you could clearly see the motion and the motion is pretty smooth. 
So in this scene it's a little bit better. I have some of the rocks in the foreground. They're slightly out of uh, focus but it helps to drive the motion. And so now check out this cool effect with even more objects in the foreground. The branches that are slightly to the left helps to create some movement. In this shot I'm panning same direction uh, but this fence wire helps guide my attention to the focal point and the subject that's uh, visible in this scene. Although a little bit further away but it certainly helps me uh, focus. Now, now check out this scene with the flowers. In post I can also zoom, so now I all of a sudden create an effect where I'm flying up and through the flowers, which creates a lot of depth in the scene. So when you're filming vertical pans like this, it always helps to use gravity in your favor. This will prevent you having to fight gravity and cause or introduce some shaking into the camera movement. So what you do is film it top to bottom and then just reverse the clip uh, in post. So another very cool effect is when you're combining panning with zooming. When you're getting close up to subjects, there is an effect known as the parallax effect. This is when the foreground moves in an opposite direction than the background. And you're creating this motion by panning around the subject while keeping the subject in the center of the frame. And here you can see the effect of this filming technique. So the reason for using this technique is to help drive focus to the subject. It is by far one of my favorite effects to create with video. Now the interesting part is the subject doesn't really have to be close to the camera. As long as you can maintain the subject in the center of the frame while panning around it. Alright, so nature scenes are pretty cool for all these effects of panning and uh, parallax effect. But let's take a look and see how we would do that with aviation, with aircraft. So of course it doesn't really matter which technique you use, but as long as you come up with a stabilization mechanism, that creates a pleasing scene at the end of the day. While no single method is bulletproof, you just have to experiment and find the one that works best in the situation. Alright guys, thanks for watching. I hope you found this information useful. Maybe you learned something along the way. I do find that I'm in the outdoors frequently and of course I bring a hiking pole. And so this is a method that works well for what I do. If you like this kind of content, if you have not subscribed, consider doing so. And also remember to hit the notify button. That way you'll get notified when I post more videos like this. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.